And this all really started when a very strange prophet <laughs> walked in and introduced himself to you. Tell me about yes, that. Yes, strange indeed. His name was Bob Jones. He's with the Lord now. And uh, many people know and love Bob Jones. He's impacted many lives over the last 40 years. But this was 35 years ago. I was 27 years old, pastoring a young adult church, just uh, newly beginning it. We had about 500 young people in our church. And he came walking in as a total stranger. He's about 55 or 60 in overalls, wearing a winter coat. And it was about 70 degrees out. <laughs> and told me, declared to me that he knew my future. The Lord had given him many visions and dreams. I didn't believe anything he said. I just thought this man is so strange. <laughs> and uh, he said, what you're going to do is, he goes, you're going to be leading a ministry one day, 24 hours a day with singers and musicians. They're coming from all over the world, young and old. And you're going to go 24 hours a day because God is calling a prayer movement, a worship movement to be combined together. It's going to go across the earth. And I don't mean my deal is going to go across the earth, but he's going to do it sovereignly. And we're going to be a catalytic. Uh, we're going to have a catalytic part of this as many other places will as well. And I said, 24 hours of singers and musicians. Like, why would we do this? He goes, because the greatest revival in history is yet ahead of us and the salvation of Israel, and the Lord is going to raise up this mighty prayer movement in the earth. Anyway, that was 35 years ago. He told me that day a bunch of things, but he saw smartphones 35 years ago, smartphones. He said, you're going to be uh, moving from your part of town. We lived in the, our church was in the affluent part of town. You're going to move to the blue collar part of town. This is in Kansas City. Yeah, in Kansas City, where Harry S. Truman lived. I thought that was the oddest, most random thing I heard. He said, because Harry S. Truman was the man God used to cause Israel to become a nation in 1948. Right. And I thought, <clears throat> I kind of knew that, but not really. <laughs> and he said, you're going to move on his property, and it will be a sign and a wonder, because these thousands of singers and musicians, they're going to be spiritual intercessors for Israel. Like Harry S. Truman was a political intercessor for Israel in the fact that he was used politically for Israel to become a nation. That made no sense to me at all. He said, this is 35 years ago now, my first meeting with him, and I don't believe a word he says, just so you know. <laughs> okay. And uh, For the record. Just for the record. <laughs> although I end up, I'm really wrong, and he was really right, for the record. <laughs> And so he said, I saw them all over Asia in the rice paddies of, in Asia with unplugged TV sets in their hands. He was, he was seeing smartphones. <laughs> and they're watching the singers and musicians on Harry S. Truman's property all over Asia. They're watching them live. Wow. I said, get this man out of my office. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> so then he asked me, he goes, he goes, uh, uh, are, are you a singer and musician? I said, no, no, I'm not. He goes, huh, I thought you would have been. Again, 35 years ago. He goes, are, do you pray for Israel? I go, never. He goes, number three, he goes, are you connected to Asia? Because you're really going to be connected. I go, no. He goes, so you know nothing what I'm telling you. I go, nothing. <laughs> then he said, the Lord told me you'd be dull. I didn't think you'd be this dull. <laughs> 25 years later, from 35 years ago, 25 years later, which is 10 years ago, of course, I'm in my office. A guy knocked on a Jewish family, the Goldbergs, they knocked on our door. And I was talking to a friend, and our CFO interrupted me. Just my friend, we're just in a private meeting. He said, I've got a Jewish family out here named the Goldbergs. They've got Harry S. Truman's property, and they want to sell it to us for a million dollars. I mean, today it's probably worth 20, 30 million. I don't know how much it's worth. It's right on an interstate. It's undeveloped land. I don't even know what it's worth. And he goes, they'll give it to you for a million dollars. It's worth so much more than that. Do we want it? And I'm telling my friend, my friends, I go, well, we don't have a million dollars. <laughs> so, I, and my friend goes, you know what? You're not going to believe this. I'm an investor, and I do properties. I have a million dollars in the bank right now, liquid. I never have million money liquid. I always go from investment to investment. I'll give it to you tomorrow. So I said, okay. So we bought the land, and in, in, in the closing day of the land was 50 years to the day that Truman sold it to the Goldbergs, the Goldbergs sold it to IHOP. So I 
call Bob Jones. He's in his 80s now. I call Bob Jones. And, uh, you know, he lives over here on the East Coast. I go, Bob, it's 25 years later. We have the Truman property. And Bob, you know, he's in his 80s. It was 25 years ago. He goes, you never did believe me. You never believed a word I said. <laughs>